All right, let's get into it because I have so much that I want to talk to you about. Um, But before we get into kind of like the gossip and the pop culture news, I really want to hear from you what inspired you to start a podcast about reality TV specifically. And so far, who has been like your all time favorite guest that you fangirled over? So I have always loved reality TV right from the beginning. I've always loved pop culture growing up. 90210, Melrose Place, anything like that, I loved. So, I mean, I loved reality TV right from like the real world, the simple life, the hills, Laguna Beach, all the old school shows I loved. And I also loved Desperate Housewives and I also loved The OC with Nisha Barton. So when there was this show called The Real Housewives of the OC, which was part OC with from Misha Barton and part Desperate Housewives, I was like, and it was reality. I was like, I have to watch the show. So that's kind of how I got into the Housewives and Bravo. And then I really just, and I set out to accomplish this, I really became friends with a lot of these people on reality shows. It's really not that hard. I hate to say this because when I say this now, people are asking, I wrote a whole book on this about how to go from fan to friend. I say that cautiously because everyone is asking for my book now since I've been mentioning it for months and I'm like, okay, well, I've gotten really busy and it's COVID and I I don't know when it's coming out, but there is a book. It literally, it's not that hard. If you follow this book, you could become friends with these people. It's not, you know, we're not talking like Brittany and Taylor and, you know, Demi Lovato. We're talking about people that are accessible. So I became friends with a lot of these housewives specifically and reality TV people and when I decided to start my, because I didn't know what I was, how I was like, I'm going to have to turn this into a business because like I'm hanging out with these people and stuff is happening here and not everyone has access to all this. So like there has to be a market for this. And I didn't know in what form I just, I, and then I was like, oh, this might be a podcast. It just literally was like, I think this could be a podcast. So when I started behind the Velvet Rope podcast, it really was two days a week one day was an interview like I'm like I do now and the other day was like let me tell you a story from behind the velvet rope from the inside out like I was out with Countess Luann last night and let me tell you what she did stuff stuff like that that was really the format in the beginning and my first episode was about me I was in Florida and I was with Dolores Catania Ramona Singer and Kelly Dodd and we went to dinner and Rick Leventhal was there and I'm like I don't, I mean, this dinner is just what you think it would be. Ramona sat down before anyone else sat down. She had her whole Branzino. She was yelling at the waiter. She was on her martini, not nice at all. Had no interest in me sitting next to her, but of course I had to. And then like Dolores is there and Rick and Kelly are in their own world. So I was like, let's see if anyone is actually interested in this story. Because I mean, I don't find it that interesting because here I am living it, but it is kind of interesting if someone was at this table, this dynamic and what's going on. So I did that as my pilot episode and oh my God, okay, people were interested in hearing about this. And that's kind of how it started. And then really the way my podcast kind of blew up is COVID. I I really have to say COVID. I mean, would it have happened eventually? Probably, but I really doubled down. Anyone that decided to sleep and drink all day during COVID, I get it, no judgments. I chose the opposite. I was like, I am going to choose to wake up and at 8 a.m. I'm on the clock. It's a work day. And from eight to nine, I'm doing this. And so I really just threw myself into my work to deal with a major global crisis in the world. And I'm like, okay, if this is a coping mechanism, this is certainly a lot better than drugs or sleeping all day or drinking all day. So I decided to do that. And then my show just started people started hearing about it and guests started wanting to come on. And then I was like, oh my God, now I have so many, I know this sounds like first world problems, but I did have a line out my door. And then I was like, we have to go to three days a week. And then we went to four days a week. And I'm like, four days a week is the stupidest thing in the world. Let's just do five days a week. That's how it became a five day a week. And then I took all my little stories and I put them on Patreon. So now it's like, you know, if you want to hear about what happened when I went to the OC and I slept at Alexis Bellino's house and it's called Weekend It With Jesus Jugs, you can pay for it. I mean, it's $4, people. Let's, let's you know, mama needs to work, needs to eat over here. So all the stories are still there. It's just all stuff like that. And like I cover the Jen Shaw case and the Erica case with lawyers, all these things where I'm like talking, that's all on Patreon now. And my show is literally like, I have turned into like a journalist. I don't want to have an opinion when I'm interviewing you. It's not about me. 
I am here, but I will back you into the corner and I will get tea for the listeners. And I have a way of doing it and it's a dance and it's just turned into like, I become like a journalist. That's kind of the evolution of it. Do like a quick round with you because I know you have so many friends within the Bravo world specifically. And I know my listeners, especially like anytime I do an episode Bravo related at all, those are like my best performing episodes. People love Bravo. For some reason, it really is a cult following. And I get it. I'm I'm in that cult. I get it. Um, but and same really- thing with me. Like I am so I think I'm just known in that world that. I have people five days a week and it is diverse because at one point we were heading down hundred percent Bravo. And I'm like, this just isn't a good business model. First of all, if the network ever goes out or down. And second of all, I mean, you know, there could be casualties. There've been minor casualties along the way. And if I burn a bridge with every person, I need to have some alternative here, which hasn't you know, happened. But so my show is diverse, but to your point, yes, I have on huge names in the world And I'm like, this show should be a top show. This person is so big and such an icon, but it doesn't matter. It rates okay. And yes, I will have a housewife from 19 years ago that no one's heard from. And they've been on one season. And I'm like, this person isn't even interesting or doing anything with her life. And yes, it will rate so high and blow through the roof. I'm like, it's just Bravo. The Bravo housewives, especially in the Bravo shows are my, my bread and butter. who has been your like absolute favorite and why? I mean, I can't lie. So I have learned a couple of things. I have learned just like anyone. I think if you go back and listen to your first shows, I have learned a couple of things. I now do my show with a couple of purposes in mind. One, I want to have the right guest and a good guest and everyone needs to be entertained. Two, yeah, I want to put on a good show for the listener, but I know, well, A, I know how to get, you to say something now. I know how to do the dance and back you into the corner. And B, I mean, my show, and this is no ego, has been in global worldwide press every week. We are in People and Us and Daily Mail and Perez Hilton, and we've been on Wendy Williams. So like, yeah, that helps the show. It helps get new listeners. So I now also know how to ask certain questions that I don't care how you answer this. It, whatever your answer is, this is going to be a headline. I've just learned that. I know it. So until we get there and no, no one knows, you can't tell, but in my own mind, I'm on pins and needles until I get that. And I'm like, okay, okay, David, you got it. Wait, you just got another one. And then I'm like, now we could just have fun. But to your point, my favorite is Janice Dickinson. I, I, I mean, if you asked me like before her, I would have said, cause she was only in the past like month or two before. So bef- like a month ago, I probably would have answered maybe like Tamara Judge or Vicky Gumbelson, maybe. Because Vicky, I mean- The like real the, OCs. And the yeah. Vicky show, like I created that feud between her and Lisa Rinna. That whole thing where Lisa Rinna was posting on her, that was 100% because of my podcast. Because she said something about like Lisa Rinna. And like, as soon as I heard it was Rinna, I mean, that's the thing you learn. Like if it was anyone else snubbing, it doesn't matter. I'm like, Rinna, okay, that gets press. I'm like, I know what to do with this. And I mean, and listen, do I feel bad at times? Yes, I do. It's a fine line between like, A, we're friends. B, I want you to come back on. But C, at this point, this is my job. And I can't, like, I will risk you not coming back on or burning a bridge. I'm like, when it's the moment, like I have to do what's right. And what's right is to blow this story up now. And I don't want casualties, but- I have to go down this road and just whatever happens in life happens. But Janice Dickinson after, now that she's been on is, I mean, A, Janice Dickinson, first of all, she is reality TV. She was on America's Next Top Model. She, I mean, she was on like Celebrity Rehab. She's been on a million reality shows. She had her own reality show back in the day, the Janice Dickinson Modeling Agency. She just doesn't care. She doesn't give a shit. So there's no canceling Janice Dickinson. She's 66. She doesn't care about working. She does not care. She will say anything. So imagine like a Sharon Osbourne, like on crack, Janice doesn't care. And so it was so refreshing. And we also went around the world because I knew there's one, I mean, that whole interview could have been one minute, 
what do you think of Gigi and Kendall? Period. That's it. I'm like, whatever you say, this is a headline. And of course she was like, no, they're, they're not good at all. But just Janice is on every topic. She just like, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like, let me be politically correct and give you something at the whole interview. It was just like, and she wasn't, it wasn't inauthentic too, because a lot of people now come on my show. We spend an hour together and I hang up and I'm like, I'll put this out, but keeping to myself, I don't believe a word that that person said. They want press, like they know the game and I'm okay with that, but I know what you're doing, but I don't share any of this ever. So Janice was authentic. I love when she's just authentically like, they suck. Who's a bitch? Julie Andrews was a bitch to me. Tyra, how do you think Tyra was? She's horrible. Yeah. She doesn't like women. She only likes gay men. And Jay Manuel, he's a little kiss ass. And mm. like, she just, it was just the gift that kept giving. I remember when that headline came out about uh, what she said about Gigi. Um, and that wasn't that long ago at all. That was like less than a month ago. Yeah, I think I saw that in the Daily Mail or something like, and I saw the interview blip too. I mean, that, that went viral, that whole conversation. That, yeah. I mean, that's why, I mean, so that's why it would have been like Vicky or Tamara. I mean, my answer is totally different now, but it's Janice, A, because it went viral, B, because she was so off the cuff and C, you just, this really has become a job. So there are truly people that are scheduled and put on my calendar that I'm like, I don't necessarily know this person or know a lot about them or am excited. Like, but with Janice, regardless of the fact that it was global press and everything, I just love Janice Dickinson. To me, she's an icon. So it was like a home run. So it really is like the conversations are so much better when I'm really into it. And I mean, I'm still doing my job and I can fake it. So the audience doesn't really know, but there are just people where I'm just like, I am asking questions and I'm interested, but behind the scenes, I don't really, this just isn't my type of person that I'm not excited about. Yeah, of course. I mean, that comes with the territory, especially if you're doing it five days a week, like you have to fill up those spots. Um, and a lot but of- But you would never know. It's not like I bring my B game or, right. you know, but I just, in my own head, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. I don't care all right, let's get through this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I I get it. Definitely. And, you know, like we're talking about a lot of your interviews thus far have made headlines. So a segment that I do in all of my episodes is start with the hottest headlines of the week. And I want to go through those with you kind of get your tea on that. So let's start off with the Kardashians. Okay. I am not like a huge Kardashian fan. However, this whole relationship with Travis Barker and and Kourtney Kardashian really has me twisted in a lot of ways. And of course it made headlines that he posted a caption about her, which in most celebrity couples would not uh, matter as much, but just because it's the Kardashians, everything matters apparently. So besides the steamy caption, Amelia, who's dating Scott Disick, says that unlike Sophia Richie, Kourtney Kardashian is not an issue in their relationship. I want to know what your thoughts are on the relationship between Amelia and Scott, as well as Travis and Courtney. Do you think these relationships are going to last? Do you think it's going to be Courtney and Scott in the end? What do you think? Well, first of all, I would watch the Kardashians for the next 40 years if they were to stay on TV. I cannot get enough. B, yeah, that's one of my tricks. You want a headline? I mean, it's not guaranteed, but nothing will get you a headline like the. It's insane. I don't like. This is just. They are the closest thing we have to a royal family. Love it or hate it. These are just the facts. It, it, I mean, so I don't know. I don't think it'll be Courtney and Scott in the end. I don't think. I mean, it, it could be. It could be, but. Scott has really changed his ways. So it's not like now he's figured it out and she's ready to have him back. It's just like, I think you just, the ship has sailed. I really do. I think they're perfect together. Scott says that they're soulmates. And I think that that's why he's kind of dating these really young women because he knows that there's not a future there. I think he's like waiting around for her to be ready. I hope so. I would love that. I mean, but he doesn't act crazy or jealous. Like he's okay with her going out with all these people. 
Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, they both seem very cordial about their relationships always. Um, I, I mean, I've spoken about this before, like personally, if the person I was with or was the father of my children was dating somebody that could be my child's child. cl- close sibling, I might take issue with that. Um, but the world of celebrities is just a different world. It really is. And we know that Rena talks on the new season about how she feels about Amelia being with Scott and she's not happy about it either. She thinks he's too old. She does say that, but I mean, Rena is such a complicated, I mean, she does say that. And I think she, I mean, I would love to know what Harry Hamlin thinks. That's what I would like to know because I think like Rena secretly, I think is like, I love this. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like you are associated Don't care. with the Kardashians. Yeah. And I mean, I let's agree. face it. If it was a regular 40 year old, she wouldn't be so thrilled. No. Her other yeah. daughter dates a law booker, like this model. I don't know. Yeah. If yeah. You know. So he's like age appropriate, but I mean, listen, it must be weird anyway. Like if you're like a Harry Hamlin and like they post so many like sexy pictures all <laughs> over their Instagrams, which is fine. I just think that I'm more interested in that. Like what happens like if you're a Harry Hamlin and like, I mean, you know, they're old enough, they date, they have a life, but that's what's weird to me. Like not weird. I just would love to know. And you can't escape really- it. Like if he has any social media, he can't get away from it. It's everywhere. And it's all that the outlets are talking about. So he has to either accept it or just cut it off completely. I just assume that Scott just likes younger women. That's just, I mean, I, I mean, I see your theory too. I just was like, he likes younger women and he has a lot of money. They have a lot of money too. So it's not like he's dating these, like, you know, it's, we don't have like an Erica Jane situation happening here. I feel like he's dating like financial equals more or less. Yeah, but how can you expect somebody who's like 22 to be ready to be a step parent? Or, you know, do you even think that far? You know what I mean? Like when he's dating these younger women, is he thinking about that? Or is he just like, this is fun for now? I don't know. I mean, it seems like at least with like Sophia Richie, the problem wasn't even that. Like, I think yeah. the problem was the opposite. Like, I think she would have been a step parent. I think she was just like, you live for Courtney. Like, it's yeah. not the kids. She's like, when Courtney calls, you run. Yeah. That's the problem. It wasn't even the kids or like anything like that. And how's that for Travis too, knowing that Scott's just hanging around waiting, waiting for the for the relationship to crack a little bit so he can get back in there. Somehow it seems different to me though, because Courtney just wears the pants. So like if Scott called, I think she would say, well, uh, that's, you know, if it was the kids, of course. But I mean, she would be like, I don't know why you're calling me at nine o'clock. I'm on a date. Like, this is not fair to Travis. Goodbye. Call Chloe. And then she would text Chloe, go deal with Scott. He's having a breakdown. Um, this is, whereas Scott would go running for Courtney, which I think is like a lot of making up for guilt. Like, oh yeah, Scott is just like, I mean, in a way, I think that's why it wouldn't work. Yeah. I mean, these young women probably don't hold him to this like whole standard of like, you're slipping up. Like that does get tiring. Yeah. They're just excited to be with him and be in that same sphere, I think. I mean, Courtney certainly has a type though. Travis is kind of the Scott type. They're kind of, I mean, I know like more tattoos, they, they're they kind of the same to me. Maybe not in appearance, but maybe in like personality. Yeah. 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 So speaking of relationships, originally I was going to talk about this Matt James, Rachel Kirkconnell reuni- reuniting in New York and not getting back together. But today some other news dropped that I just think is honestly more important. So Colton Underwood officially came out as gay today. He says that, you know, he struggled with this for a long time. He really kind of hated himself and now he's ready to accept his true self. What are your thoughts on that? And I was thinking today too, what if we did like another bachelor season for Colton where it's men and he can find his right match? I mean, A- people have been talking about just a gay bachelor for a long time. It would be, well, first of all, I had someone from The Bachelor on yesterday. It's coming up. Now, this is the problem with interviewing people is 
you put something out even two weeks later and like people rake you over the coals. Well, what were you afraid to mention Colton, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the Kardashians comes out a year later, people. Like it's obviously recorded before that. But so there will be no talk of Colton because this was recorded two days ago. Um, I think they should do that. And now they have their perfect person. My you know, exactly. I mean, he's already been there, so you don't have to really wonder. I mean, listen, if this thing is really going in the direction that it is, and now we have like Tasha hosting and Caitlin is hosting, and I mean, I don't know what's going on with Chris, but he has a lawyer, the same lawyer that Gabrielle Union used for against America's Got Talent. I mean, I don't think we're going to see Chris back, whether you want him back or not. I mean, unless the ratings drastically decline because people are threatening. There's a whole bunch of people that are saying, I won't watch, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, they just like, that's the thing. Like, that's why it's great that Matt was the first black bachelor, but now where is the Asian bachelor? Where is the Indian bachelor? Where is the gay bachelor? Like we have a lot more to go. If you really want to do this right I'm not sure we're going to go in that direction. I mean, I think they should, but I just don't, I, I don't see it. I don't see I, I don't ABC see it doing it. You know, there was that show like Boy Meets Boy on Bravo a thousand years ago, which was that, and there was Finding Prince Charming on Logo. So it's been attempted, but ABC, I don't know. I just No, but Colton don't. is the perfect person. Like you said it, he already has a fan base. There's already people who love him and will watch just because of him. You know, he's getting an outpouring of support for coming out. So all of those people are going to carry over. If, if there's any time to do it, now is the time. That's what I think. I think so. I mean, how would that alienate people watching? I don't think so. I mean, no. I think if you're trying to make a statement by ABC, this is a good, like it's being handed to you. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So the last headline that I have for this week is I did a deep dive on the Framing Britney Spears documentary a while ago. And my listeners know exactly how I feel about what went down with Britney and the conservatorship and if she had anything to do with the documentary. But this week, Britney made a lot of claims about the color red and fans have been speculating that there's a deeper meaning to this. What do you think? Is this just another quirky Britney trick or is there a deeper meaning to this post about red? What is she saying? She's just saying like, she's posting a bunch of pictures with the color red, mentioning it. She's saying like red is coming and nobody really knows, you know what I mean? People are saying that they- What do people her, think that's like a cry for help or like I, a- you, you remember a while ago when they said, you know, if you're in danger, wear a yellow shirt. And then the next post she was wearing a yellow shirt. People are saying that that's what this is, that it's, you know, them saying, mention a color and now all of a sudden it's red. Hmm. Do you think it's just a coincidence? I think so. I mean- I So on my Patreon too, with all these lawyers, while we cover Erica Jane and Jen Shaw, we do touch upon Britney as well. The last time we were talking about conservators and Erica and Tom, this lawyer was like, you know, let me tell you how you get out of a conservatorship. She's like, you really don't. She's like, they're basically set up so that it's like almost impossible to get out which makes sense because the person that you're under is doing, it would have to be like a whole changing of the laws. I'm not saying she's never, but the way she painted it, she was like, this is not happening. I'm like, Jesus. Well, with Britney too, she, I mean, a big thing the documentary touched on was it is almost impossible to get out of a conservatorship, but they weren't designed for people like Britney right. with her right. mental state and her age and her assets you know, it's designed for kind of older people who might be kind of losing it a little bit. Um, and it usually doesn't become an issue whether the conservatorship needs to be changed. Yeah. I mean, you know, because then Brittany makes these statements and I know, like, is she really making them and is she really controlling her social media? But she keeps saying, like, whatever you think, whatever you're reading and she's like you don't know I mean she says this over and over you don't know a person's life and she implies like life is great right I mean that's what her social media and her posts are always like 
So I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I love mean, do a I think you should theory? Yeah. I mean, like, do you think you should free Britney? Yes. Do I think it's like bad behind closed doors? It doesn't seem like it. I, I think it is more hype, but I mean, I just don't think she should be in it because like she can make her own decisions now. The whole thing is just so sad, really. In your podcast, you obviously chat with many Bravo alumni, and I want to get your tea on some of these headlines. I know you've talked about them on your show. You have full episodes dedicated to some of these headlines, so definitely listeners need to go check that out if they want more info. But I'm going to throw some things your way, and in a minute or less, I want to know what you think about these headlines, okay? First off, Jen Shaw's arrest. I covered this last week, but how do you feel about this? And how do you feel specifically about her posting about getting her her hair done and her hair laid right after the news of her arrest broke? I mean, as far as her arrest, I feel like I'm not shocked. This doesn't shock me. Erica and Tom getting a divorce shocks me more. That shocks me more. This doesn't shock me. I mean, if you were to close your eyes and someone's to say, which of these women from Salt Lake City is this going to happen to? I would have said Jen Shaw first and Mary second, period. I don't know who else. I mean, you know, I think I could see all of them. Sorry, my little friends, um, <laughs> Lisa and Meredith. Hopefully you're not oh, listening gosh. to this. But it doesn't shock me. So that doesn't shock me. I... Don't get it. I mean, again, I talked about this with a lawyer. Like, there's no lawyer in the history of lawyers. I I am a lawyer. I don't practice anymore. I haven't in a long time. That is saying there's no way a lawyer is like, don't worry about it. This is fine. Go and post. So she is clearly been told, stay the hell off social media, which if it were me, I would be like, this was great, but now it's over. And so now, holy shit, I'm caught. So, okay, one, stay off social media. Okay, done. Next, is that all I have to do? I would be listening to everything I'm told. The lawyer I had on too on my Patreon was like, you don't understand that the mind of white collar criminals, not saying Jen is guilty because you're innocent and proven guilty, but she's like, you don't realize the mind of white collar criminals. She's like, I've defended tons. She's like, they truly think they are innocent. Like- what I'm yeah. doing, I'm a smart businesswoman and everybody would be doing this if they figured it out. I don't even that, know that that's I how feel, they think. Yeah, I don't know that I think Jen Shaw thinks that she's innocent. I just think that she doesn't think justice is coming. She's like, okay, they caught me and what? Like, what right. are you going to do? We I have know. a lot of money. We have top yeah. lawyers. Yeah. The network is involved. The, net, the network, the network will sell you down the river. So, so I, I agree, but- I don't see how she would get out of this without some jail time. Like there is jail time coming. So I don't know at what point you realize that. Yeah. But she's going to have to. Because the thing is when this first came and I did speak to these lawyers, we were all like, she's not the top dog. Like, you know, she could be like this big in the whole thing. And now that it's come out like that, she is the top dog in this. I mean, I assume if I were steward, I've already turned and- like set myself free and or work working to get this woman so I don't think she gets what's coming and it is coming I mean whether it yeah. takes a year or whatever she's part of the original affidavit with those other 10 people that's why the trial so soon and on October which is like but she keeps posting that's the thing and then to post and say thank you to the fans for being so loyal and I mean, this just isn't the time. Like, this is bigger than the fans. It's bigger than money. Like, you might go to jail. Yeah. And I can't believe with her husband being a lawyer, like, that she doesn't understand that. Have they not had a conversation? The whole thing is so strange. So I just think, I don't know. And, you know, I don't know. And I mean, if she really goes away or whatever, I'm not even so sure this is going to help her. Like, yeah, I think Bravo is interested at this moment. Sure. But you're no Teresa and they're, I don't think they're going to want to deal with it. Like if the feds are involved, like this is federal. So it's just like, I think, you know, with that whole, like, oh, you're in your third season, fourth season, it's time to shake the cast up anyway. I don't think it's going to help her long-term. She did is a lot different than what Teresa did. Like tax fraud and taking advantage of the elderly are two very different things. Um, Yeah. You know what I mean? 
and you do really truly believe let's face it i mean Teresa ain't the sharpest tool in the shed so when she says i just signed it because my husband told me well you're old school italian you have that marriage your brother wants to have that marriage with you really believe like Teresa just didn't know stupid but i we all believe you signed this and you didn't know what you were doing right that's different than Jen Shaw being like i need more gucci and i am like scamming these people and like thank god it's this easy to make this much money because i with my 20 gucci. assistants yeah right and wait we're gonna be on tv and i have to show how rich i am and let me go rent this chalet now yeah yeah speaking of legal issues i know again you went into a deep deep conversation about this but quickly what are your thoughts on Erica's divorce? And I also want to ask you, the trailer for the new season dropped this week and it is looking like we're going to have kind of an inside look at what was going on between Erica and Tom. Like, do you think that she actually knew what was going on? She says in the trailer, no one knew but him. Is that true when he's funding your life? Did you really not know? And do you think that this was the real reason for their separation or or do you think there were other things at play? I mean, there's so much in that statement. First of all, I feel that we are going to be duped, like we're duped with the Melissa and Joe thing of someone having an affair. I do not think we're gonna get as much inside information as we think, just because it's in the trailer. I still think you know this is the difference it's like Jen Shaw's husband coach Shaw is a coach so it's like I mean Tom made a ton of money so it's easier I think that Erica didn't know like whether she knew or not like I could see why she wouldn't know because he's the Aaron Brockovich lawyer and like they always had like he always had a ton of money right from the beginning so I don't know, like if it's two private planes and $40,000 a month versus like 10, like what's the difference? You know what I mean? Like the amounts were so much. Yeah. I could see her not knowing. It's not like they went from rags to riches. He always had a ton of money. But I when mean, they got divorced, there was a lot of speculation about, you know, first there were those, those weird texts that were leaked about like him having an affair. And then it became the speculation was that they were actually separating to protect assets. Like, do you think that the separation was out of spite? Like, oh, you had an affair or I can't believe you did this, I'm leaving you. Or was it like, holy shit, uh, let's separate so that I can be protected. Like, you know, what, what do you think was the reason? The second one, and I've talked about this too. I truly, I can't help it. I truly think Erica came home, the lights were out. She put on the lights. She's dressed to the nines. The pretty mess has arrived. Tiago, she's like, Tiago, the dog comes running. She pats him. She goes into the dining room with that long table that we've all seen. She flips on the lights and Tom is sitting there in the dark drinking with two bottles of wine. And he's like, sit down. And she's like, you're scaring me. He's like, sit down. I truly think there's no affair. I, this is, I will, I really believe this, that he will fall on the sword for her. And he is like, this is what's going to happen tomorrow morning. You are going to wake up and you are going to call E! News and here is your statement. And we will never speak again. Everything is being watched. I really think that he's like, this is what you need to do to, I mean, listen, I think, I think like when you've done something and you know, they're coming for you, it's you like, you don't do that and ruin a good thing until it's too late. So I really think that Tom is a brilliant lawyer, but thought that they could get ahead of this. Because like, if the divorce happened and it played out and then it's a year from now and she had the money, then she would have the money and they couldn't come after him. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, well, I mean, yeah, there's, I'm oversimplifying. Maybe they could have, but like, I just think that it moved too fast. But I do think their plan was to slander each other in the media and say to, uh, and all of this to make it look real, but for her to break free and win the divorce. And he has to say like, she's horrible and all this to make it seem real. Mm -hmm. In an ideal world, they would have been divorced. She would have gotten the money and he would have 
whatever, gone to whatever, he would have fallen on the sword and his life, I think at 81, he was like, I, this is my last act of love. Yeah. And she, I feel that. And I feel that they love each other. And Erica cries. And then she's like, okay, here we go. Like that's Erica. I really think that, that she's hurting inside, but she, so I think that it just caught up to them too fast. And he, it was a brilliant plan, but it moved too fast. Cause like, you don't want to do this until you really have to. And then like, when you really have to, it's too late. But I think if they did this a year ago, it could have worked or worked a lot better. But there's a question of like morality there because we all know where that money came from, right? Oh yeah. We all know. So I'm not that, saying that this is a good thing or that they've so, done a good thing. Right, right. But with that being said, like, let's say the plan went as as planned. Like, let's say it worked out. She's still walking away and living that same lavish lifestyle with money of victims, families. Like, you know, is the problem gone? Are you still going to keep your celebrity status? Are you still going to keep your, you know... um like performance status are people still going to be interested in you when they know where your money is coming from now well that's another issue but she doesn't seem to be getting canceled just yet so i don't know if that's like innocent till proven guilty i know but i mean no, no nobody else is in that situation like people get canceled when there's speculation yeah yeah so yeah it's I mean, strange. I mean, there's a lot of big names that are saying like, you go girl, every time she posts like a sexy lingerie yeah. photo. That will never end, I'm sure. So, I mean, that is a bigger issue. But I think, okay, so if you're canceled, does it matter then? Like, you know, I mean, I think that's not her ideal, but then you say, okay, I have 40 million or whatever it was and I'm canceled. Yeah. And, and I'm living still, the rest of my still, life in style. Yeah. And you're still famous. Like you're still Erica Jane. And there are enough people that are obsessed with fame that will be there when you're at, you know, the polo lounge or, yeah. you know, yeah. wherever you are, like each day, your life, you'll still have the hangers on you have how yeah. wonderful and fabulous and you'll still have a life and you'll have money. So I'm not condoning this. I'm just saying you're canceled. All right. You're fired from Bravo and you're still famous and you have all the money. Like it, would have been okay for I mean her life would have gone on a lot different than this yeah yeah and I I agree with what you said about us not knowing as much as the trailer leads I think that they Bravo is so genius when they do that you know they really edit those trailers to make us think a season is going to be something that it's not Um, and that takes me into New Jersey because along with these like rumors of um, infidelity I think the drama really that should have been the focal point was this this feud between Teresa and Jackie. Obviously now it's kind of squashed, kind of. I want to know, are you team Teresa or are you team Jackie? And would you have accepted that apology from Teresa? So again, because here's where like, I really know these people in real life. And so it gets... That's why I never get emotional about what I see on TV. That's true because I feel like I just base it on real life. And there's so many questions I have about this rumor that I might be having somebody from the current New Jersey cast on my show soon. And I am going to ask lots of questions, but just in life, if I had to choose between those two, I would be team Jackie as a human being. I agree. I want to say, I'm team Jackie. Obviously, like the comment she made was unfair. You should never attack children. And I get that. I understand what she was doing, but it was wrong timing. She was obviously in the heat of the moment. However, I will say, I know that we kind of categorize Jackie as like an emotional person, but in my opinion, the trigger of people talking about her husband cheating on her not that I necessarily think that he is or that there's validity to the rumors, but like your reaction makes it more believable. You know what I mean? Like, like well, how that's upset the argument. she gets. Like, why are you still talking about this? Exactly. Like if he has told you that he has is not cheating and your friends are saying, we don't think that he's cheating, then who cares? Like, why are you crying about it when Teresa is talking about it? Yes, that's, the only thing 
I mean, I still find it so hard to believe, but I mean, this is so stereotypical. Like just, you know, I mean, she's pretty, but like Evan's like really hot. And I just, listen, I am from New York. I just have a cynical view of the way relationships work in general. Yeah. And whether or not he's cheating, it didn't need to come out that way. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I'm still right. Like I get it. Okay. You brought Gia's name into it. But to me, it was clearly an analogy. I I have to go back and listen to see like, you know, Teresa's argument. You didn't say that. Like, it's like, I don't, I think I thought she did, but I'm just team jockey as a human being. Yeah. And I mean, my God, like you have to love Gia too, because her name was what was dragged through the mud and she's on the phone with Teresa. Like who cares? She apologized. Like it's not worth it, whatever. She is so mature for her age. Seriously. She's the glue of that family. And she's like, just move on. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of relationships, news broke this week. I, this, I, I can't that Bronwyn's relationship with girlfriend Chris is officially over. What are your thoughts on her relationship status with husband, Sean? I mean, my God, they have like 20 kids. They're in what an open marriage. Like she's gay and, and she doesn't want him sleeping with anybody or being in a relationship, but she's going to be in a relationship. I mean, what in the world? Do you think that this was all like a publicity stunt to get attention? And now her and Sean are going to rekindle and she's going to say, no, actually, like, um, you know, I am gay, but like my heart belongs to Sean or, or I mean, what do you think about all of this? I mean, I really feel that she had her first season. This is what she wanted her whole life. And I think Vicky and Tamara being fired scared the shit out of her. And she's like, if those two can be fired, anyone can be fired, which that is true. That's been the case. I mean, I don't know why you needed that to happen. And I just think she came back and was like, I will not be that person, you know, in 10 years, but I am not famous enough. I am going to break out this second season. And I do think all of this has completely backfired. And it comes across with most people as fake and I am I would think she would be let go I mean that's where my I put my money on her being one of the ones let go I think they should all be let go personally the entire cast no offense Emily or anyone that I know but I think that she is a wonderful person I just don't know if this tv is for her (laughs) I I think I've said this before. I think that you, if you're not going to go the old way, and I'm not sure they're going to go that old way and bring all these people back. Yeah. I really feel. Now, listen. I am all about. I like my housewives in their fifties. I love. Yeah. I mean, I love that it gives people that are not really on TV. It's still mm. geared towards the youth. So I love it. So this is not me. But if you really want to you're like, this franchise has failed. We need to, I would recast the entire thing and I would do it with 30 something year olds. Cause that's with like the Hills. Like yeah. I would get blonde, thin. I mean, I, I know, and you know, yes, let's have some diversity. One person. Cause I mean, I'm just saying, if I'm not saying I support this, but I'm saying, if you want to think like a person that wants ratings, I think that's how you would blow this out of the park. It's yeah. not really where the world is going at the moment. But it's not, I mean, have tons of diversity, but make it like the Hills, like Elsie and Kristen and just like 30 somethings that are not married even. And don't, let's do the housewives. All right, well, no one in New York is married, just out every night and trying to find boys and are boy crazy, make it like Laguna Beach in the Hills. That is what I think would blow this thing up. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to do it otherwise. When all of this first came out about Bronwyn and people were saying that it was a publicity stunt, you know, her coming out as gay, I really was against that. I was like, that it's too far for a publicity stunt, even though the other housewives were like, no, she's definitely seeking attention. However, I do think it's very convenient, the time of this breakup and the time of filming the new season, um, because what are we going to do? Follow around Bronwyn and Chris? Like, that's not what the people are interested in. They want to know what's going on between her and Sean and their 500 kids. So I think that, you know, 
not necessarily her sexuality, but maybe this relationship specifically might have been a little more planned than we are talking about. Um, I think so. And I think there's something about, and I'm not saying this is my opinion. I think there's something about Bronwyn to me is like Jen Shaw and the likability category. Yeah. There's something that with the audience does not resonate. They come across as unlikable. Yeah. That to me is the thing. Like you like Teresa, you hate her at times, but you, I mean, you feel for Teresa. I mean, look what Definitely. she's gone through. This is your whole life. Mm -hmm. And she does work 24 hours. If there's an appearance for $5,000 over there, 5,000 miles away, she'll be on that plane for the, right. the daughters. There's something about Jen Shaw and Bronwyn, which I think comes across as unlikable, right? To yeah. the mass audience. So, and so when they give us that little bite of something to attack, you, you know, Bravo fans are going to take it and run with it, unfortunately. And I think when it's really clear to Bravo, like they've read comments, they, like, you know, listen, they're all negative comments. When they really watch themselves and they're like, this person is unlikable, mm. then I think you're gone. It's not yeah. Ramona where you love to hate her. It's not the same. It's yeah. like, you're just unlikable. <laughs> yeah, and that's then true. They have to go. So I'm not so sure Bronwyn is guaranteed to come back. It wouldn't shock me if she did, but like, I would think that she wouldn't. That If I had to take a guess, I would say she's not coming back. Yeah, that's going to definitely be interesting to see. And that actually is like a perfect segue into my next question for you. So Brittany and Jax from Vanderpump Rules welcomed their first child today. It was a baby boy named Cruz and they joined Stassi, Lala and Sheena in the new parent club. So with this whole OG cast being now new parents and with the new cast that they brought on all being fired for ra racist comments, what do you think is the future of the show? Do you think that they will be renewed for a season? Will it be the OG cast and following their parenthood journey? Or honestly, is it just kind of done for good? I mean, I think it's done for good. Don't you? I do. And unfortunately, that really breaks my heart because Vanderpump Rules was my first show when I was young that I started watching on Bravo and I got hooked and then I got into Housewives. So I kind of really grew up with the show. Um, I am sad to see it go, but I don't think I can take another season of Jack's cheating rumors. Like it's, it is becoming very repetitive um, and now with babies in the mix, like that would just be a little too heartbreaking to hear rumors like that. Now with them having a new son, I think some things are going on with him and, and tax fraud as well. So it's like, it's too adult of, a, of issues for me to want to follow. Um, and I think a lot of the viewers feel the same way. I agree. I think if someone ever does a sociolo sociological study, this should be the like in that category of like, here's a show that had one of the biggest falls from grace. Yeah. Because I agree. I mean, Housewives was my gateway drug, but in its heyday, Vanderpump Rules, I mean, I would say all the time is like, people would say, what's your favorite show? Now I'm like, oh, give me a minute, let me figure it out. Hmm. But it was 100% unequivocally Vanderpump Rules. It was the best thing ever. I was obsessed yeah. with all of them. I saw Straight Up with Stassi like 8,000 times when it was on tour. <laughs> it was like everything. And so I think like we wanted it to come back. Like after Stassi and Kristen got fired, we were shocked. But now who is out there on the edge of their seat waiting for the show to come back? Like who is like, wait, I mean, it, it's back. We, we like, it's back. It's on social media. We're all, we're all caught up. Just what you said. They yeah. all have babies. Jax has tax fraud. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing we don't is the like, cameras. Yeah. no, but like to your point, like the thing is like, you look at like Jax, he's making these statements about the tax fraud and you're like, this isn't cute. Like you're like a loser. Like, it's like you are 40 something. It's like, it's not fun anymore. It's not like, so I don't know, what are they going to show? And the thing is like, you blew your load too fast. If you didn't have this hybrid like cast and nobody really bonded to Max or Brett or Danica, or because of course not, who is going to bond with any of these people when Stassi and Lala are in the same damn scene? I had Charlie on my show and she, that went crazy too. She talked about mean girls and how they don't speak to her. That went all over the world too. But anyway, 
it's like they if they didn't do that, they could have just said, we are back and here are the actual people that work and the whole show has been recast and let's show these new people. And we would have no choice but to watch and we would have complaints in the beginning where Stasi, but I think you would have taken those people by the end of the season. It would have been like New Housewives. I don't I think mean, you can do that now. I think because now it's like it failed. Like the new cast failed. I think you can't really do that now with none of the old people because like you've already done that and it was a disaster. They should have just held off and done that. Well, let's not forget what made the show what it is, which is initially when the show came out, all of the cast was actually physically working at at the restaurant. They were working at Sir, and the drama was around the restaurant. Now Lisa Vanderpump is basically off Housewives. She's not really affiliated with Bravo anymore, so that takes a hit to the show. None of the original cast is working at, at Sir anymore. Um, some of her restaurants have closed down, so I think that kind of takes a hit as well. Most, like... Yeah, ex- I think it's just what, Sir and Pump, that's it, That's and Tom Tom that are left open. So in my opinion, I think the only route that they really have to take is make the new show about Tom Tom, um, a whole new cast except for the two Toms and their partners who are the only right. two that don't have babies right now. Um, but I mean, to me summer house kind of is taking over what Vanderpump rules was like now this is my favorite Bravo show. And it's because the cast is young, they're relatable, you know, it's very interesting to watch, I think. Um, so, and by the way, in that Tom Tom idea, which I agree with you're going to have to have one night a week or every night, DJ James Kennedy and probably yeah. the new general manager replacing Max will, oh, be, yeah. she- will be Sheena. There you go. Sheena, she has to get in there some way. Yeah. Which I mean, and, and then oh, she's super a bunch pregnant. of new people, but Sheena, I think they, that there's a hope for, but I agree. I mean that, or, you know, maybe not, maybe just the two couples, but. Or maybe yeah. just ax the show because I, I do think that there, where is its place in Bravo? Because now really this last season and this season of summer house have really taken off. I mean, they've really gotten their following People are invested in the show. They're invested in the cast. And so my last Bravo-related question for you is Summer House-wise, for me, my wish for Summer House is that Paige and Carl get together. Just one more time. I I just need to see it. I need it to happen. Who is your favorite Summer House couple or who do you want to be a couple on Summer House? Now, I've had Luke and Danielle on, on, on Behind the Velvet Rope. In real life, I could say my absolute favorite person in the house as a human being is by far Danielle. Okay. By I was, far. I thought you were going to say Luke. I was like, really? I think that's an unpopular opinion. I would not say Luke. We can just say that. Would not say Hannah. We can say that. Danielle. Danielle is just the most wonderful, kind human being and just great. Everyone listen to my chat with her. Um, I agree with you. I think that Paige and Carl would be a great couple, really. Carl, I really think has worked his shit out and, you know, like still drinks and slips off and like that's life. But Carl is really, I think, ready. And Paige never liked Perry and Perry never hung out with her friends. Well, guess what? Carl will hang out with your friends. And I think they would be a great couple. And they're attracted to each other. They would be literally, and I don't just say it, like they would be literally perfect. Watching them flirt, like even when, that the moment in two episodes ago when she was still with Perry before the whole thing happened, where they're sitting at the dinner table and Carl's like, can I come sit next to you, Paige? And he sits next to her and he like grabs her arm. I'm like, this is sweet. Like this is what she was hoping from him when they were making out in the pantry two seasons ago you know I I agree so I really think that there's hope for for them and and we'll see you know she said on uh, on an interview recently that she's never going to close that door she's never going to say never to rekindling things with Carl and trying again and I hope that that happens for all of our I think they would be perfect yeah really what about do you think Hannah and Des will last (laughs) Um, In my personal opinion, I do just because they, 
I mean, like, listen, I, I follow the giggly squad. I like Hannah, but I think it takes a very specific type of person to watch all the crazy shit that happened this season and be like, yeah, that's my, that's my partner and really stick it out. And that's when Des came in. I mean, that's when he was the most attracted to her when she was having mental breakdowns every day. And I've seen him, I've seen him with her just like in New York, like back, you know, like two seasons ago. So like, they've known each other. Like he's been like, they're on the same comedy scene. So do I think, do I think the engagement was rushed? Yes, I do. You know, I mean, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors and honestly, COVID and quarantine has made things move at like warp speed for everybody. But I think a lot of people are, going to come out of this when things go back to normal and be like, Ooh, maybe this was too much now that my life is normal and I want my space. And there are a million other people out there, you know, I don't know now, you know? And then the other question is like, which we could say this about lots of people, but you tell a difference, like, you know, he probably really does like Hannah, but like, you know, this watch what happens live appearance. I mean, I know he was called in, but like, do you like the cameras a little too much? <laughs> I mean, I think anybody who is an entertainer, I mean, we I've talked about this before and I'm sure anybody who has a podcast, even us, right? Even us who willingly get on camera and want to interview people in the in this world, we all have a little bit of we um, do, but like I'll admit it. Like I'll be yeah. like, I'm all here for it, and like, can I fucking come and watch what happens tonight? And like, I really do like you, by the way, because like I couldn't sleep with you three nights in a row if I didn't. But like, can we get me and watch what happens? And if you think that makes me an opportunist, I mean, I'm not because I'm really like I would just be honest about it because like I care about you, and if not, and that's your thing, that's cool. But like, I'm here. I'd like to come on. You know, for me, really, what the question is about Hannah and Des is what was revealed this last episode, which is she like rips. Luke a new one for leading her on when the whole time she was basically sleeping with Des and you have to question she came into this she was already sleeping with him she was already dating him and she came into this season hoping to rekindle things with Luke so if Des was oh my god I'm like so in love with him and so obsessed with him wouldn't you have come into the season with that mindset like f Luke I don't need Luke I don't need his attention I already have this guy in my DMs who I'm already sleeping with. You know what I mean? Like, and then for Des to watch this play out and be like, oh, wait a second. You came in here and you wanted like this guy, but you were sleeping with me. Oh, I'm going to propose. Like, you know, the timeline is strange to me. It's strange, but we've seen crazier things happen in the Bravo verse. So you never know how it's going to work out. But I do agree. And it's weird how like, Bravo just acts, cancels certain shows right away as do most TV show, you know, most TV networks. And then with Summer House, they just, I don't understand it. I don't know if it's because it was like a cheap show to make because they're paid, especially in the beginning, a dollar and they had to buy all that food themselves and other than renting a Hamptons house, which mind you is not cheap. But like they gave that show so much rope to hang itself and it didn't right because it was horrible in the beginning and nobody watched and it was bad it was bad yeah and it just got okay the second season was like not really much better but and then like and you're like this is good and now you're like this is like the show i can't wait it's i don't know what why but bravo gave it a lot of rope to hang itself and it saved itself it's really weird I have to admit like Thursday nights, those are my summer house nights. Obviously that's when the show airs and my boyfriend just knows, like he comes home and he's like, I got it. Like goes into our bedroom and I'm out here by myself, like sprawled out on the couch, totally invested in the drama. I love it. And I really do think, like I said, when Vanderpump started to fall off, summer house started to pick up because viewers were looking for that next thing. They wanted that craving like fulfilled and and Vanderpump wasn't doing it anymore and they found that in Summer House and so now I think investing everything they invested Bravo invested into Vanderpump into Summer House is going to be a very smart move for them you know especially we see their personal brands taking off Giggly Squad is taking off Lover Boy is taking off and this is really becoming like 
the next big thing for Bravo, especially with a lot of the housewives kind of dwindling off, like, like we've talked about. I mean, yeah. And it's, we have a winter house now. I know. My God. Which I really hope, cause I don't know the, like, but I mean, I hope it's not too many appearances by too many people. Like then to me, cause like I kept seeing like, I'm like, what is everybody from summer house, but Hannah in the winter house. I'm like, then that's not interesting. Like it needs to be select, like just Paige and just Sierra, like with like Craig and Shat, you know, like it needs to be really blended. It's going to be great probably. Who is Housework? Paige going to hook up with? Who is, I mean, who's single? Like, I mean, it better be go. Carl. That's all I know. It better be Carl. I can't like in my heart, I can't take seeing Paige hook up with somebody that's not Carl. That's, that's it. If it's not Perry, it better be Carl. I think they are really, truly the, really, they should just, they're perfect for each other. I agree. And I think Carl would literally like, that's it. I don't think he would cheat. I think he would just be like, look what I've gone through. And like, I am so lucky to have Paige. Like this yeah. is better than any, like, I think he would really appreciate her now. I agree with that. I, I do. I think he's really changed a lot and made good on his, you know, promise to himself. And I, and I, I just want to say like quick aside, those are all of the Bravo questions I have for you, but the, the, the real nature of Carl going through addiction and, you know, considering himself an alcoholic and then watching him find a middle ground that is not complete sobriety, I think is really reassuring to a lot of viewers who have struggled with similarities. Like, you know what I mean? A lot of people who watch shows like this are young. They like to drink a lot. That's why they relate to the show, but seeing somebody like Carl go through a hard time and, and slip up and not, put himself down about it and just be like, actually, I'm going to find like a middle ground and, and stick to that. I think that was really great to see. And I think that is what Paige was like, wait, Carl's kind of hot. And maybe I don't like Perry as much as I thought I did. Yeah. And, you know, I think that changes you like as a person, like, you know, getting sober and like losing your brother and just like, I don't know, like, I mean, it is kind of like Jack's like losing his father really did. It makes you realize like I could go on forever. Like you could be single and slutty forever. No one is stopping you. It's a choice. It's fine. But just understand where that would lead. That's leading you. Yeah. So I think Carl has had this like thing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I think they're perfect. I do. I agree with you. Well, although that is all of the Bravo related questions I have for you, I do want to know reality TV wise spanning Bravo and many others, even MTV can be included. What is your reality TV rose and thorn? What is your favorite reality TV moment? And the one that you were like, Ooh, I can never rewatch that. I still go back. Like I love the Hills and Laguna. Yeah, like the way it ended was great that they're like, we're in on the joke and this is fake, but like, that's not like a moment. It's just the whole thing is great. You know, a lot of things like on Mob Wives, I thought Mob Wives was great. Like that shit, that was like, I don't even understand this show. Like, how is this show even made? Like, this is like really scary and it's a real life. So stuff like that. I don't know if there's like one moment. I mean, I think like my thorns are just like shows like Can't Get Away and like all these one season wonders where you're like, how was this green lit? Yeah. I mean, you know, and like Housewives, like there's been so many iconic moments in Housewives. Like, yeah. The New bunny. York is probably my favorite just because I live in New York and like I understand that lifestyle mm. more so than any others. But right, the bunny, like just so many. I mean, anything where it's like real life, like, Kim and Kyle, I mean, Kim and Kyle, yeah, dealing with alcoholism mm -hmm. and the Joes like on the floor, like rolling around, like <laughs> when it's real life and you're like, this is really not a reality show. Like this is real. Mm -hmm. Like the whole, and that's when I'm like, okay, I'm invested. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping that in perspective when they kind of like do that fourth wall break where it's like, wait, I'm actually watching someone's life. 
Like, right. You're like, this yeah. is a family being torn apart. And it was Beverly Hills and it was New Jersey, both. You know, I mean, I feel the same way about MJ and Reza. I mean, they've been friends for like 30 years. And oh it, my gosh. And I do think both of them would do anything to stay on the show and be famous and collect that paycheck. But it still was real. Like it was yeah. real. And so that's when you're like, I understand like a four year friendship, like 30 years, like what? Yeah. That's crazy to me. Ugh, don't even get me started on Shaw's. I love that show. Cannot wait for the new season. It's a great show. Underrated, man. Underrated. It really, it really is underrated, but I, I love it. I suggest anybody who hasn't watched it, watch it because it's so good. It will draw you in. Talk about drama. Persians, they do it. They do that drama differently. And everybody is like a there's no fluff. Like everyone deserves their place there. GG, like everyone brings it. Everybody yeah. brings it. There's no weak link in that cast. Yes. Also, yes. when she was on, like just turn on that camera and they will go. Exactly. And that's just how they are. I'm sure even when the cameras are off. What can listeners expect from you next? Do you have any fun episodes coming up that we can hear? You know, I, we do five days a week and we always stick to, well, not all, but there's always something current of what's on. So, you know, when Salt Lake was on, I had on Meredith and then I had on Whitney and then I had on Lisa. So, you know, New Jersey's on now. So you could expect more New Jersey guests. And like, we just had little Frankie on Dolores' son. We had Kim D. We had our controversial Amber Marchese episode. Lots of people <laughs> have lots to say about that. And Dallas is on. So we're not done with the current cast of Dallas. We have some current Dallas ladies on the way. Today we have like Michael Fishman from Roseanne. Like, so we have actors and actresses too. Real world, some stuff. But like, you know, there's, I would say Dallas and New Jersey just because they're on. And then the next crop of shows on Bravo really are going to be like Family Karma's coming back. Beverly Hills, New York, and million dollar listing New York, which I love, but we are sitting down next week with a major, major, major R-H-O-N-Y. So, I mean, by process of elimination, it's either Sonia, Ramona or Luann, because those are the three that have been around forever. Tell everybody where they can find you. Where can they listen? They can listen to Behind the Velvet Rope podcast, anywhere podcasts are found. And If you are annoyed with me talking, the good news is you won't really hear much about me. It's me asking questions and you can see how I will, we start out nice and smooth and I will, 20 minutes in is when I start my attack, 20 (laughs) minutes, 20 minutes to 40 minutes is when I am going to get every bit of information for all of you. So behind the velvet rope, anywhere podcasts are found and on Instagram, it's at behind velvet rope. There's no the, just at behind velvet rope different interview every day just wake up and you're like who do we have today gifts if you want the headlines before they become headlines listen that should be my new tagline it should be that was really i like it oh yeah i'm gonna that's i kind of like that one i like it too thank you so much for coming on you've been such a pleasure and i loved all the tea you spelled i will come back though anytime you want me to this was fun yeah i loved having you i always have something to say about what's currently going on in the reality world once this next round of bravo shows come i'll definitely need to have you back to talk about everything that's going on with those new york and beverly hills especially, especially. I have a lot to say. yes thank you anytime keep in touch